Thanks for checking out this movie review video. This is for the 2019 Indonesian film release and Shudder original that's coming to Shudder on Thursday, January 21st, The Queen of Black Magic. Now, this is one that I didn't know much going into it, but I had kind of seen a still from it because when I get the screeners for these films, I have there's like a little still image there. And based on the still image, I was thinking, oh no, I think this is one of those kind of subgenres of horror that I'm not really that into, but gonna give it a shot. Then I started doing the research on who has directed it, who has written it, and when I saw the writer, I thought, okay, I'm very interested to check this out now because they have another film that they did on Shudder at the moment that I really enjoyed, and um, this ended up being the same. Very, very happy. So I'll gush a little bit about that writer in a minute, but uh, I want to talk about some other things real quick, mainly the director, because I don't want, you know, everything to get overshadowed by my interest in this writer. Newfound interest, basically. So directed by Kimo Stambol, uh, who did films Takut, Faces of Fear, Macabre, Killers, Headshot, and Dread Out. Um, real good job on the directing with this. Uh, it looks really, really, really good. Camera work is really nice. Lighting is appropriate. This is one of those instances where I talk a lot about when films are shot in a dark setting and they're uh, too dark so you can't really see what's going on. It sucks. There's a lot of dark time in this film. Well, not just lighting, <laughs> lighting wise, but dark like material, but, um, you can still see what's going on. And, and that's one of the biggest things for me is they do a good job of making sure, even though it's dark, you can still see what's happening. So good job on that. Now, uh, this was written by Joko Anwar. Now, Joko Anwar has done some films such as The Forbidden Door, Ritual, Satan's Slaves, and Empedagor. Now, if you've seen my review for Empedagor, you know I really enjoyed that film, was not expecting to. This film was the same situation, although since I had seen Empedagor and knew that Anwar had written the script, I had pretty high hopes. But even then, it really, I was I was happy with it. There's something about how Anwar can write a story. So after watching this film, I started thinking, I want to know more about this individual. So I started looking things up online about Anwar, and it sounds like Anwar is A, very well respected in Indonesia, and B, should be very well respected in many other places. And when I looked into his history and kind of how he is with film, he hits a lot of genres, apparently. He's written and directed and, and done film for a bunch of different genres and does it really well. So I think this is probably going to send me on a bit of a Joko Anwar rabbit hole to discover more of uh, Anwar's films. I mean, the first one I need to hit up is Satan Slaves, because I haven't seen that yet, and it is on Shudder. So people know if you end up liking The Queen of Black Magic or you like uh, in Pedagore or Satan Slaves, see the other films that Anwar was involved with. Um, so yeah, basically, I think I'm becoming a fan. I think I'm becoming a fan. Uh, I get a vibe from Anwar in his ability to tell a story and weave a tale and the pacing of it and write a really well done script. I get a feeling kind of similar to Chamwook Park from South Korea, which coming from me, that's a really big uh, compliment because Park is my favorite director of all time. Uh, I think he's amazing. So, well, writer and director, not just director. But anyway, I'll, I'll stop there. Quick synopsis of this film. I don't want to give too much away because this is a film where you shouldn't give too much away. And so basically, uh, there is a, an orphanage where the main individual who has taken care of the kids at the orphanage is on his deathbed. So a bunch of um, family members for, who grew up together at the orphanage kind of come back, get together um, for the end of this individual's life, and um, then things start happening. So that's as much as I want to say, because I don't want to ruin much. It's, it's very good to go in blind on this film. And that gets to a point of, I wish the title for the film was different, just even more vague. Now, the fact that it's called The Queen of Black Magic doesn't give a lot away about the film, to be honest, because there's a lot that happens and there are twists to it and, you know, everything like that. But it gives a aspect of it away, and I just wish that it was more vague for that reason. So I, I wish you would not know the title and associate anything with it, with the film, until after you're done with the film. So... It's just a small thing that, that bothered me a little bit. 
So this starts with the family in a car, and through their dialogue, you get a good feel of for who they are and what their kind of family dynamic is like. It's realistic, and that's one of the biggest things. One of my biggest problems with screenplays is that a lot of times when characters are written, they don't feel real. The way they talk to each other, the way they interact, their relationships, the backstories, all that stuff doesn't feel real. But with this, it does. It feels real. The dialogue, the relationships, the backstory, all of it feels real, much like within in, in Pedagor. So Anwar has a really good grasp of how to write realistic people into film, which is not easy, I will say. It is not. I've written some scripts, you know, nothing's ever been done with them really, but I've written some scripts and I know it's, it's tough. It's not an easy thing. Uh, there's a jump scare that changes the tone of the film on, uh, pretty early on before the title card, uh, followed by a oh shit moment. Literally, I said that <laughs> when this thing happened. I was like, I didn't see it coming. I was like, oh shit, okay, oh, wow, okay. Um, grabs your attention. Great attention grab. Really like it. Came out of nowhere. Well, not out of nowhere, but I just didn't see it coming. And it was it was a nice surprise. There's palpable awkwardness that's kind of captured well with the acting, the directing, and the cinematography. And it makes sense within the story. It's intentional, I assume, because the characters are kind of seeing each other after not seeing each other for quite some time, and the circumstances aren't the greatest. So there's this palpable awkwardness, and the acting's really good to, to make that happen. The directing, the cinematography, all that stuff comes together to really paint a good picture of it. Now, one of the other things that happens is with a bunch of the shots, it, with multiple characters in it, they're kind of like um, spaced out quite a bit within the shots. And I noticed that early on, and I was like, this has to be intentional. And it played to me, I don't know if I'm right about this or not, but it played to me like it was to kind of show a visual representation of what's going on with the actual relations between these individuals that, you know, to go along with that awkwardness, you're seeing physical space in between them, which is also, you know, you know, mental space, emotional space between them, uh, you know, too much space. So they're not super close anymore. So I, I like that aspect of it. Uh, the music used in this is pretty minimalistic, which is a good thing in my opinion. I hate it, hate it, hate it when scores go over, over the top. They're too heavy. They lead the viewer over what's actually happening on screen. So this really draws the music back. Uh, it, it gets a little bit more intense and more heavy when it needs to be and when appropriate. And it never crosses the line of being too much. So really good job with the music on that. Uh, there are also some really nice stretches of music not being used at all, which if you've watched enough of my reviews, you know this is something I hammer as being awesome and very important with film. I think we we lead viewers too much with the score, and there, there's a great use in silence. And in this film, they do that quite a bit, where they have these great stretches of silence where you're just kind of left to yourself. And you need to figure out how to feel. And I think it also does a great job of building more tension when eventually something hits. You know, either for the purpose of a jump scare or just to leave the audience a little bit confused until they can figure out how they should be personally feeling at that time. So I, I really do like that. Um, when the situation makes the next step up, kind of goes up the next level and ratchet things up, uh, it's in a pretty significant way. So... I, I quite enjoyed that. Um, it's not a situation where, you know, you can tell they're trying to step things up and you're just like, eh, it's a little bit weak. Very decisive moves. Very decisive and done well. I like the camera work in this because it's very smooth until it's not smooth. And when it's not smooth, it's intentional. And it's during the points where it should not be smooth, which are the more intense moments, the more horror-driven moments. Uh, it gets very much not smooth. So that kind of dichotomy between smooth when things are going well and rough when things are going roughly is cool. I love that kind of visual play between the two. The pace at which key information um, comes out in this is good. This goes back to the script writing with Anwar. Pacing is great. The story is paced very, very well. Uh, it leaves enough time to work on character relations, but not let things get boring. Too many times with scripts and in, and just in film in general, 
there are these long stretches where the characters are interacting and there's not a whole lot going on. There's not a whole lot being added to the actual story and it gets boring and you're just kind of like, what are we doing? It stagnates. That does not happen with this film. So that is awesome. There are good stretches where, you know, something's not necessarily being added to story-wise or, you know, you feel like something horror-related hasn't happened in a little bit, but you're not bored at all because it's working on relationships. It's working on some backstory. So uh, the time is utilized quite well. Uh, it's a pretty tight script, in my opinion, and that's one of the biggest things I like to harp on a lot is when scripts are not very tight because um, just edit it down, edit it down. You know, people don't like to have their time wasted. With this film, it was a little bit under an hour and 40 minutes. No time wasted. Love it. Uh, there's some CGI used in this. Now, I'm very... I don't like CGI use typically, but there are situations in which it looks a lot better than it would look otherwise. I understand that it's, it's a much cheaper way to go, so you can kind of stretch the budget more, so I get it. Um, there are a few moments where they do the CGI in lighting that doesn't make it look the best. It looks a little bit wonky, and those are the moments that I don't like, uh, but there are uh, also instances where they use it in kind of darker uh, settings and that's when it works more because you can't see kind of like the rougher edges. Uh, you can't focus on it enough for it to look unrealistic for whatever it's being placed on as it's as the backdrop. So it's just one of my things. I just practical is always better. There is practical stuff in this and when that happens it looks very good. Overall I think they did a pretty good job with the CGI but um some of the stuff in the lights, just like I said, it's a little bit wonky looking. Uh, they got me with an uncomfortable horror moment. Uh, yeah, it's uh, it, it, they really got me with it because I started to cringe. Not because it's something that is like a thing for me, because I know there are always, you know, there are things that I have where like if I see it in film, I'm just like, oh, very uncomfortable with it. It wasn't one of those. It was a... Um, Something, it's the way they shot it, the way the acting was done, and just how it looked, effects-wise, just really got me. Uh, and I was just like, Ugh, you know, like, I, I felt like I could almost feel what it would be like if that was happening in my life. So, yeah. Uh, and then they also did something that is one of my things, that if I see it in film, I'm like... That's gross. That makes my skin crawl. And they did it. Um, it's, uh, I don't want to say any of this stuff, obviously, because it ruins a little bit of, of stuff that you would not necessarily expect. So let's keep the surprise going. But yeah, it, it's one of those things. I'm sure it's a thing for some other people too. But um, yeah, we can talk about it in the comments because spoilers in the comments, no problem. And just know that. The twist reveal is well done, and actually there are kind of a few twists to this, but like the main twist is what I'm talking about. It has real impact, and it changes a lot about the film itself, much like in the film in Pedagor. Um, you can tell if you've watched these two films that the writer is the same because the structure of, the, of it is the same. There are some themes that are kind of similar. There's a lot of focus on family, and also, you know, family history, family secrets, stuff like that. So, um both very good films. I'm, I'm a fan. But yeah, the twist, well done, had real impact. I mean, if you if you don't know much about Anwar's stuff, uh, at least horror-wise, you would probably go into this and think, okay, this is what we're getting until the twist happens. So you'd be even more surprised than I was because I was expecting a twist based off of Impetigore. Now, to that, to that degree, much like in Impetigore, the twist is messed up. And I say that in a good way, like messed up from a horror fan's perspective is always a good thing. That means it's creative. That means it's dark. That means it hits. It has impact, like I was saying. So it's good. Uh, this is dark, disturbing, relentless, and just makes me really appreciate how Anwar writes a story. Already said it. Going to say it again. Anwar. Very nice work on this script. Very nice. This speaks to how the secrets people keep, especially the dark ones, can change everything, past, present, and future. And it also uh, speaks to how it can change how a story is told from an audience perspective and how a audience perceives that story. And then also, when twists happen, like in this film, 
you look back and think, well, then if if that's the reality of this, then that means this from earlier events. It, it has implications is what I'm saying that kind of like sends the audience's head, you know, kind of twirling off in, in a direction of, but then that means this and this means this and which is a good thing because any time with a film you have me thinking past watching it, which this film did, I'm in. I, I don't I don't like films where I just watch them and then I'm just like, all right, I'm done. Well, sometimes I do, but for the most part, when I want to see a movie that I deem to be really good, that's the situation. So anyway, um, yeah, can you tell that I liked it? This is one of those films. Do not sleep on this. Make sure you see it. Watch it on Shutter. Um, very happy with it. So out of five stars with half stars in play, I'm going to give it a very, very solid four star rating. I was between four and four and a half, but if I did quarters, I would definitely do a 4.25. If you know my rating scale, I'm extremely hard. I barely ever give out fives and four and a halves are like crazy rare as well. So a four is really good. And this film, like I said, make sure you check it out. So real quick, put, like I said, in the comments, we can talk about this film. Let's let's go at it. Uh, spoilers, go ahead. Let's talk about this. Did you love it? Did you hate it? Are you in between? Let's talk it out. I want to hear what everyone else has to say about it. Um, yeah. So uh, one thing real quick, if you could do me a favor, hit that subscribe button. If you like this review or any review or any video I've ever done, I would really appreciate that. That's your best way to pay me back for the time I'm spending doing this because I don't, you know, I don't make money or anything doing this. It's a it's a hobby. I'm just trying to bring horror nerds together at this point. Build a community through this channel. So uh, also hit that notification bell button if you can, and that way you'll know whenever I'm putting up new videos, whether it is a review or an unboxing or a haul video or other stuff I end up doing. But regardless, I do appreciate you taking your time to check this out, and until next time, keep it brutal.